Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today we're going to be doing probably the most beautiful book haul I have ever done. I am not kidding guys, I don't know what sort of crack has been going on with the publishers over there but the cover game, the special edition game has been strong lately and this book haul covers both January and February and I feel the need to give the disclaimer, a lot of you already know but for anybody who doesn't I do work for fairy loot so I have a lot of fairy loot books. <laughs> A lot of them did come in through January and February so between that and my own book buying I have ended up with some incredible book mail and I wanted to show you guys all of the books because they deserve the limelight. The artists who work on these books are truly incredible and I've been so thrilled to be adding these to my shelves. I have actually read quite a few of these ones so buckle up, get cosy, grab a drink, a snack, whatever you want to get comfy and let's chat about some books shall we? So I am going to go through just a few that I did buy that aren't like special editions or anything. I have an order to this, don't you worry guys I've got you covered. So the first two that I'm going to talk about are both manga. You guys will know if you've been watching that I have been gradually just collecting the first volumes in various manga series because I do want to try them out. Do you guys want like a newbie manga collection tour or anything like that because I can definitely do that but in the meantime I will just show you my newest ones. So one that has been recommended by my friend Lauren a lot is Bungo Stray Dogs by Kafka Asagiri and Sango Harakawa. I've had quite a few people recommend me this one actually so I have high hopes for it. This one apparently follows a boy who was ejected from the orphanage that had been his home. He has no prospects. That just reminds me of the Pride and Prejudice quote. <laughs> who rescues a peculiar man from a suicide attempt, but it turns out that he's part of an armed detective agency staffed with individuals whose supernatural powers take on a literary bent. I am already very intrigued. I want to know how the supernatural abilities link to books. That just sounds great. I am invested already so excited to see what that's all about and then the second manga I got is Children of the Whales. I know that this is a very popular manga series that I honestly have no idea what it's about so it kind of reminds me of Terry Pratchett because we have a floated island in the sky. In an endless sea of sand drifts the mud whale, a floated island city of clay and magic. In its chambers, a small community clings to survival, cut off from its own history by the shadows of the past. Chikuro is an archivist for the Mud Whale, diligently chronicling the lives and deaths of his people. As one of the short-lived Thymia wielders, he knows his time is limited and is determined to leave a better record than his predecessors. But the steady pace of their isolated existence on the Mud Whale is abruptly shattered when a scouting party discovers a mysterious young girl who seems to know more about their home than they do. Hmm. I feel like this one has quite the fan base so I'm hoping that I can join it sometime soon. And then one more book which I actually purchased this ages ago, almost a year ago and it's only just arrived because this is a self-published book and when you purchase self-published books from Waterstones they always take ages anyway but then they had the whole the whole thing, if you know you know, they had a whole thing where their system messed up and everybody was just having to wait months for orders so that on top of it being a self-published book anyway just meant that I did not get this book for about a year. <laughs> so much so that I've actually forgotten what it's about besides it being a fantasy romance that was recommended by Becca from Back in the Books. She has told me that I will probably love this one and I will take her word for it because this one is Savage Lands by Stacey Marie Brown. I know it has something to do with fairies. Almost 20 years after the barrier between the earth and the other world fell in the fair wars, Budapest is balancing on the precipice. A battle for dominance is brewing amongst the elite fae and the privileged humans in Eastern Europe. The prejudice between the sides is bubbling with hate and violence. 18 year old human Brexley has grown up in privilege, but not without heartbreak. After being orphaned, she's taken by General Marcos, living in the walled city rife with power grabs and ruthless political games. Then one night, the course of her life changes, and Brexley is thrown into the most feared prison in the East. Halal has the house of death where you go in but you don't come out. She must learn to live with the worst of the fae and human criminals. The rule of hierarchy puts humans at the bottom, where the only way to survive each day is to make alliances with the fae. Here she meets the sexy, vicious legend Warwick Farkas. Farkas? Farkas. <laughs> A myth among man and fae. He is brutal, cruel, arrogant, and as lethal as the law says he is, ruling the prison with an unchallenged authority. Brexley can't deny an intense draw to him, one that might cost her her life. If the games don't take her out first, a fight to the death where only one survives. I did not know there was like a game element in this, so interesting. Mine and Becca's reading taste tends to line up pretty clearly when it comes to fantasy romance, so, so if she enjoyed it, I probably will too. I then have a few arcs which were very kindly sent to me by publishers, but I am so excited for. These are all on my anticipated releases list. 
So first up we have One For My Enemy by Ollie B. Blake. This one is set in New York City and follows two rival families. We have the, what are they called? Antonova sisters and the Fedorov brothers. I believe there are very vague Russian influences in this because one of the mothers is known as Baba Yaga, but I don't think it's like a retelling or anything. It's just very vaguely inspired by it. But these two rival families are crime families. I believe they're involved in a kind of drug supply chain and they are also witch families. So we've got a lot going on in this, but I believe that a sister and a brother from the rival side start becoming a little bit more drawn together. Meanwhile, the family feuds are continuing over generations. So I imagine that this is gonna have a lot of tension. I adore Olivia Blake. She is fast becoming one of my favorite authors and I'm sure that this book will only solidify that case. So very excited for this. I'm desperate to read it. Hopefully I can do so soon. I then also have Eric LaRocca's The Trees Grew Because I Bled There, which is an anthology of collected horror stories exploring the shadowy side of love, grief, obsession, and control. It examines trauma and tragedy. And just as a few examples of these stories, it does say on the back that in these narratives a woman imagines horrific scenarios while caring for her infant niece. Online posts chronicle a cancer diagnosis, a couple in a park with their small child encounter a stranger with horrific consequences, and a toxic relationship reaches a terrifying resolution. Now the main reason why I'm interested in this is because I read Things Have Gotten Worse since we last spoke by them last year and it is genuinely my favourite anthology that I've ever read so I am just desperate to read more from Eric Rocker and this seems a wonderful place to continue with that. I am so excited. Again we'll hopefully get to it Soon. And then the final arc that I received that I am so excited for and may have actually read by the time this video goes up is Morgan Is My Name by Sophie Keach. This one is an Arthurian legend retelling of Morgan Le Fay, of course. She's a famous sorceress from Arthurian legend and is said to be Merlin's rival. So I don't know too much about her story. Arthurian legend is still one that I am kind of dappling into here and there just as it comes up. But I do generally love the atmosphere of it and I'm hoping that this is gonna be the sort of retelling where I can just sink right in especially because we are following this sorceress who's known for being quite a shady figure. So this already looks badass, especially with the quote on the front saying, my name is Morgan, I said, and there aren't enough words for all that I am. I hope this is a woman who is just raging at the world, honestly. But yes, this is one of my next books that I will be picking up. So you should be seeing a vlog including this one soon, if not already. So then we get to the beautiful books, all of the special editions. So I have a few from The Broken Binding, a few from Waterstones, and then the rest of them are fairly loose as I said before. So to start with the Broken Binding, I do have their subscription. The way that their subscription works is that they do it as series. So if you subscribe, you will get a full series over the course of however many months correlates with the books. So if it's a trilogy, then you will get that full trilogy over the three months. January's book was Best Served Cold by Jura Abercrombie, which is one of his first law books and very, very handy for me who has taken part in the Catch Up Book Club. So we did already receive the first three books last year and this is just a continuation continuation of them. And these books, while they do have the standard artwork on the cover, as you can see it is a hardcover, we do have these digital edges and underneath we have this gorgeous foiling that I just think looks super satisfying with a quote on the spine as well. The quote says, Mercy and Cowardice are the same. Because this is further into the series, I'm not actually going to read the synopsis of this one just because I will be reading the trilogy that comes before this very soon. So even if they are unrelated, I just don't want to know anything about it until I get to reading it for Catch Up Book Club. So I do know, however, that this is a very popular grimdark kind of series that I am excited to get to. Also, I do receive the subscription for free just as a disclaimer, but one thing that I did buy for myself from The Broken Binding for very obvious reasons when you see it is the Roots of Chaos set that they did for Samantha Shannon. So here we obviously have The Priory of the Orange Tree and Day of Fallen Night. Again, they do have the standard covers but wait till you see the rest of it because to first tell you about these books Priory of the Orange Tree is set in a matriarchal world a queendom that is said to be holding holding a race of dragons at bay with its royal family line as long as there is a queen on the throne from this particular family then the dragons will be kept at bay they will not come back at least that is the theory we do actually have a few different perspectives in this so we have some people who worship dragons we have people who just do not care about what is going on in the political climate but it makes for a very in-depth and and heavily political story that I just really enjoyed reading. And of course, we have A Day of Fallen Night, which has just recently come out. This is a prequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree. You don't need to read them in any particular order because this is just kind of like the history of this one. So this one does technically come before Priory, but you can read them in any order really. But the special edition features on these books are just absolutely beautiful. So first of all, we have 
these digital edges with fire and dragons on. But the thing that won me and the thing that always wins me over is the foiling on the hardcover because look at this. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? Have a close up. This is just absolutely stunning. I love the writing on the spines. Also, the way that this book is thick enough that you can just write <laughs> on the spine always amuses me. These do also have a ribbon bookmark. These end papers with dragons on and they are also signed. And then to show you a day of fallen night too, this is the foiling on that one. A little bit more gold in tone against the dark blue and it's just beautiful again. And again, we have the end papers inside and it is also signed. So I am very pleased with these. They are absolutely beautiful and I am very happy to be adding them to my collection. I then have a few Waterstones pre-orders that came in, which again, all have really beautiful sprayed edges, end papers, everything really. So first up we have Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. This is one that I have read and I did review it in my February wrap up. I rated it four stars quite enjoyed it. This looks quite unassuming from just this cover but I really like the design that we have so we've got this snake and emblem on the sprayed edges and then underneath we have this red foil. I love the spine and also these end papers I think are just absolutely beautiful so I am really quite glad that I bought this. <laughs> And this one is of course the sequel to Ninth House, which again, I reviewed that one in February because I did a reread of that before reading this one. So if you want my thoughts on these two, go and check it out. We then have God Killer by Hannah Kena, which honestly by itself, just the cover art is absolutely beautiful. I love, love, love the colors of this cover. And I will say that this was largely a cover by, but it does sound really cool as well because this one says that Kissen's family were killed by zealots of the fire god. And now she makes a living killing gods and enjoys it. That is until she finds a god she cannot kill, a god of white lies, who has somehow bound himself to a young noble and they're both on the run from an unknown assassin. Joined by a disillusioned knight on a secret quest, they must travel to the ruined city of Blen... 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 Raiden? Blen... Raiden? Where the last of the wild gods reside. I don't quite know what to think of this one because it is really quite small actually and I've heard mixed reviews but I am very intrigued, like I said, largely a cover by. We do also have a gorgeous green hardback and this artwork on the end papers as well, which I honestly just want to visit. It looks so cool. And as well as the foiling on the cover, we have some beautiful sprayed edges to match the cover. And the final Waterstones pre-order that I have was The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. This one is an occult dark academia book. I was sold so quickly. <laughs> and this one we're following a group of people who are... <laughs> All of the books just start falling and my reflexes mean that I have caught them all. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. We followed a group of people who are doing research projects and their professor, I believe it is? No, the museum's curator, Patrick Rowland, is obsessed with tarot and he enlists their help in discovering, I believe it's the origins of tarot, maybe not the origins, but like he's got some outlandish theories, it's said, about these tarot cards and these seem backed up by a discovery that he makes and they all get wrapped up within this discovery and figuring out the secrets from there. Again, I have heard very, very mixed opinions of this one, but I'm just intrigued. It's Dark Academia and Tarot. I, I need to read it. <laughs> I absolutely adore the cover of this just in general. The faint skull in the background, I think just looks so foreboding. But then we do also have these edges that match the vibe as well. And one of my favorite things is once again, the end papers, because how cool is that? I love the kind of Renaissance artwork tapestry look that this has going on. This is just a beautiful book. I love it. So then we get to all of the fairy loot books and as I said, there's a fair few of them, so buckle up. A lot of these I have actually shown in videos before because I have read them or I've shown you them for whatever reason. But first up, we have The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake, which I have read. I reviewed it in December, I wanna say. I'll find the video and link it below, but this one is one of my favorite books. Absolutely adored it. Rated it five stars. Dark Academia Fantasy. We are following six people who are very morally gray in competition with each other. And it is just a great time. I am obsessed with these characters. And I'm also obsessed with this edition because I love this kind of dark red color that we've got going on. So not only do we have a beautiful color scheme, but we do have these spirit edges, lots of foiling going on. We have some character art on the end papers and also some foiling, because we love foiling here at Fairy Loot. So you're about to see a lot of that. 
Oh, and also, just to show you the artwork on the back too, because we have all the other characters. I love them so much. <gasps> I am just Olivia Blake trash at this point. Next up is one that I reviewed in January because I read it then. Don't know why I felt the need to explain that. We have Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan. And for some reason, every time this book is on camera, it just completely changes the color of this. This is like a teal blue, not the vibrant green that this is showing. I don't know why it's doing that. So again, I will put a photo on screen of what this actually looks like because I don't know why this does this, but I promise the colors are a lot more pleasing than it looks here. But this is the second book in the Celestial Kingdom series. The first book being The Daughter of the Moon Goddess and one that I really enjoyed. This one I rated three stars, but I still really found it to be a fun time. And for this one, we have these digital edges. Absolutely beautiful artwork on the end papers again, as well as character artwork on the foiling. This is also signed. I do believe the Atlas Paradox was signed as well. And some more character artwork on the back of the book. Next up, we have the Inheritance Game series. Now, this is a series that I am not sure I'm gonna like. I haven't read these ones, but I cannot get over how much I adore this color scheme, the earthy tones with the gold foiling are just absolutely beautiful. So the Inheritance Games, I believe, is quite literally just what the title would suggest. There are people who are rivals for some kind of inheritance that they are all wanting to gain. We have Avery, who has come from nothing. She has a plan to keep her head down, work towards a better future. Then an eccentric billionaire dies, leaving her almost his entire fortune. And no one, least of all Avery, knows why. Now she must move into the mansion she's inherited, filled with secrets, codes, and an old man's surviving relatives, a family hellbent on discovering why Avery got their money. Soon she is caught in a deadly game that everyone from the Strange family is playing, but just how far will they go to keep their fortune? So this is a YA thriller mystery contemporary thing. I'm not quite sure what genre this would fit into actually, but again, this, I mean, come on, look at that. How extravagant does that look? They all have a quote on the back as well, along with this design on the edges. Once again, artwork on the end papers and some more incredible foiling. <sighs> I am obsessed. And all of the books look like this. So we have The Hawthorne Legacy, which is book two, looking like this, and also with incredible artwork inside. And The Final Gambit, which has one of my favorite color combinations of dark green and gold. That is, once again, just absolutely stunning. I am obsessed with these. I really hope I love them because they sound like a fun time. One that I've shown in a fair few videos now is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rashani Chokshi. This one is a fantasy retelling of sorts of Bluebeard and one that I really enjoyed. I reviewed this one in my February wrap up again, so again, it'll be down below, but this one is just a really interesting design on the sprayed edges actually with the stained glass style artwork and again, foiling on the cover featuring these two birds, which look really cool and just adds to the extravagance of the story. And then this is the artwork on the opposite side. Next up, we have Spice Road by Maya Imbrum. This one was the YA January pick and one that I am so impressed with because not only is this just a beautiful cover in general, but we have some very detailed spread edges, which just look really cool. But then, I mean, I know I've shown this in a video before. I think it might have been my bookshelf tour, but we have some, again, gorgeous artwork and some very, very extravagant foiling. Is this not just the shiniest book you have seen? <laughs> it's absolutely stunning. This edition also has a reverse dust jacket, so you can change it up if you want a little bit of something new. And in this one, we are set in a world where there is spice magic. So if people take in a certain drink, it will unlock their abilities. And our main character is quite well known for how strong and powerful she is with her abilities. But her reputation is being overshadowed by her brother's legacy, who was known for being magic obsessed, which I believe is kind of like an addiction. He's caught stealing the very highly guarded spice magic and promptly disappears after this. But then there is actually evidence that he is still alive and so she ends up making a deal with the council to bring him back. I have heard amazing reviews for this so I am very very excited to read this one. But even still just oh, is that not just a show-stopping book if ever you have seen one. And then finally I am going to mention the February adult book so if you are expecting it and you haven't seen it yet and you want to avoid spoilers click off this video now. I'm gonna give you a countdown okay three two one you better be gone don't yell at me if you're spoiled. 
I gave you a warning, okay? <laughs> so the February adult book is The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi, and again, incredibly shiny. <laughs> we are magpies at Fairy Loot. We will put foil on everything that we can. The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi is S.A. Shakraborty's newest story following a retired pirate who actually goes into piracy because she gets roped into a deal that she cannot pass up. I'm currently reading this at the point of filming. I should be finished by the time that this video goes up, but I'm currently really enjoying it. And I am so thrilled about this edition because I mean, look at it. And one of the really interesting features of this one actually is that the end papers are also foiled. So look at that. Even the insides are shiny. <laughs> We have our main character Amina on this side and then on the back we have a cute little cat, look at him. And then as well, look at the moon faces guys, look at this. Come on now, this is just getting ridiculous. In the best way possible of course. <laughs> So yes, it is fair to say that I have been thrilled with my book mail recently. I really feel like everyone is just stepping up the game and I'm so thrilled to see so much character artwork as well because to have like a canonical thing included in the book, I just think is so special. And then just to make everything extra shiny is something that I adore. So I am very, very pleased with these books as you can probably tell because I have not stopped beaming all the way through. But I would love to know if you have a subscription of your own, if you have a favourite edition of a book maybe, or if you've read any of the books that I've just mentioned, because there's definitely some good ones in this pile. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it this far into it, then leave the sparkles emoji because of how many shiny books were in this video. Tell me which one is your favourite edition as well, because I would be very intrigued to hear. I know that I wouldn't be able to decide, so I'm making you decide instead. <laughs> But for now, I'm going to love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all my social media and the bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.